Exercises on Paragraph Basics, Part 2. Exercises on Coherence, Logical Order. To create coherence in a paragraph, the writer can use logical order. This is uh, to use a rational way of linking the ideas to each other. There are types of logical orders like order of importance, chronological order, space order, and so on. In this exercise, you are asked to indicate the type of logical or order used in the following paragraphs. What you have to do is to read carefully and see how the ideas are linked to each other, how they are arranged. There are some words or expressions which can help you to find the order. We take the first one. Louis Pasteur is revered as a great scientist for his three major discoveries. Most important, this Frenchman created vaccines that have saved millions of human and animal lives. The vaccines grew out of his discovery that weakened forms of a disease could help the person or animal build up antibodies that would prevent the disease. The vaccines used today to protect children from serious illnesses owe their existence to Pasteur's work. Almost as important was Pasteur's brilliant idea that tiny living beings, not chemical reactions, spoiled beverages. He developed a process, pasteurization, that keeps milk, wine, vinegar and beer from spoiling. Finally, Pasteur found ways to stop a silkworm disease that threatened to ruin France's profitable silk industry. Many medical researchers regard him as the father of modern medicine. In this paragraph, the discussion is about the three major discoveries of Louis Pasteur. We notice that the writer uses special expressions like most important, almost as important was, and finally. These clearly indicate that the order is an order of importance, from the most important to the least important. The second paragraph now. After his arrival in Illinois at the age of 21, Abraham Lincoln tried his hand at a variety of, of, of occupations. In 18 30, he worked as a float flatboat man, making a voyage down the Mississippi River to New Orleans. Notice the use of the date. On his return, he worked as a story keeper, postmaster, and surveyor. With the coming of the Black Hawk War in 1832, he enlisted as a volunteer. Again, we have the use of a date which follows the previous date. After a brief military career, he was elected to the state assembly. Here we have the word after. In 1836, having passed the war examination after private study, he began to practice law. Another year that comes as a new point on the axis of time. The next year he moved to Springer, Springfield and began a successful career. We notice in this sentence the use of the next year. By the time he started to become prominent in national politics in 1856, he had made himself one of the most distinguished lawyers in Illinois. Here again we see another point of time. We notice that in this paragraph the ideas are organized according to time, therefore the logical order is a chronological order. We take the third paragraph. Sighing, she raised her eyes and gazed out at Paris's dazzling landscape. We understand from this topic sentence that uh, a picture is going to be described. The picture of Paris's dazzling landscape. On her left, across the, the Seine, the illuminated Eiffel Tower. We see a description of a place with the expression on her left, straight ahead, the Arc de Triomphe. 
and to the right, high atop the sloping rise of Montmartre, the graceful arabesque dome of Sacré-Cœur, its polished stone glowing white like a resplendent sanctuary. Here a description and a, the use of some expressions which show place like and to the right, straight ahead. We continue. Here at the westernmost tip of the Dinan wing, the northern south thoroughfare of Place du Corcel, the Carousel, ran almost flash with the building with only a narrow sidewalk separating it from the Lourdes outer wall. Far below, the usual caravan of the city's nighttime delivery tracks sat idling. We notice through the use of some expressions which show place uh, the left, the right, uh, the top, below, and so on. Uh, this is used mostly in descriptions. On the basis of that, we say that the order is space order or spatial order. Now, in this exercise, we'll see how coherence is created in a text through the use of transitions. When I use the word transitions, uh, this covers all types of transitions, including conjuncts, uh, coordinating conjunctions, and even subordinating conjunctions. We said that a text without transitions seems to be uh, containing ideas which are detached from each other, and moving from one idea to the other would be difficult. The transitions will help to create a smooth movement from one idea to the other. The exercise rewrites the following paragraph to improve its coherence by adding the right transitions. Make the necessary changes. Here the focus in this paragraph is on adding uh, the transitions only and not to use the other cohesive devices. You may notice that there are other cohesive devices which are used, like repetition of words, the use of pronouns, and so on. But the focus is on the use of transitions. Let's read the paragraph without transitions. Speaking and writing are different in many ways. Speech depends on sounds. Writing uses written symbols. Speech developed about 500,000 years ago. Written language is a recent development. It was invented only about 6,000 years ago. Speech is usually informal. The word choice of writing is often relatively formal. Pronunciation and accent often tell where the speaker is from. Pronunciation and accent are ignored in writing. A standard diction, it means words, and spelling system prevails in the written language of most countries. Speech relies on gesture, loudness, and the rise and fall of the voice. Writing lacks gesture, loudness, and the rise and fall of the voice. Careful speakers and writers are aware of the differences. We notice that the sentences themselves are good. But we notice that there are gaps between each idea and the other. When we use transitions, we are going to eliminate these gaps. Let's see the paragraph now with transitions used. Speaking and writing are different in many ways. Speech depends on sounds. Conversely, writing uses written symbols. Here we have linked two sentences with a conjunct. Conversely. Speech was developed about 500,000 years ago, but written language is a recent development invented only about 6,000 years ago. Here we have linked two sentences with a coordinating conjunction and we have revised the structure to avoid repetition. Speech is usually informal, while the word choice of writing, by contrast, is often relatively formal. Here again, we have linked two other sentences with the subordinating conjunction while and the conjunct by contrast. Although pronunciation and accent often tell where the speaker is from, 
They are ignored in writing because the standard diction and spelling systems system prevails in the written language of most countries. We notice here that the tool used is although, which is a subordinating conjunction. Speech relies on gesture, loudness and the rise and fall of the voice, but writing lacks these features. Here we have linked two sentences with a coordinating conjun conjunction, but uh, the, uh, we have avoided the repetition of some words. Careful speakers and writers are aware of the differences. Transitional words and phrases show the relationship. We notice that the use of transitions eliminates the gaps that exist bet uh, between the ideas.